In this episode of 15 Minute Watercolor Cards, we're doing a lovely little painting inspired by spring and hyacinths and watering cans. <laughs> Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Hi friends, welcome back. My name is Shada, and on this channel, I try to share art projects that are approachable, beginner-friendly, but still beautiful. They're designed to get you painting, and today's project is no different. We're doing this little watercolor card with a really simple form of a watering can and flowers. So I'm starting with a piece of cold pressed watercolor paper. It's cut to size. I buy these blank card and envelope sets at the dollar store, but you don't wanna paint on them. You want to cut a piece of 140 pound watercolor paper and that's what you'll work on. Now before we start painting, let's talk about what we're doing. It's this watering can full of flowers. The watering can is pretty easy to draw. It's uh, kind of a rectangle. You want to round the corners a bit. The top will be a little smaller. You can add a simple handle on one side and then on the other the spout. Just two diagonal lines going up towards the top of the can and then um, that oval for the spout. Mine was kind of wonky there, but just work it out in pencil first. And then we'll do this big burst of florals coming out of the top of the watering can. So simple forms. Um, I always want to create something that looks like you can do it. Then when you come over here to your watercolor paper, to keep everything centered, I think it's best to draw a circle where the flowers will be. From there, you draw down and just draw in or sketch in that watering can, that rectangle. And put the handle on the side, doesn't need to be perfect. Mine is like literally just a square. And then those two lines angling up and then the oval for the spout. Now, what you wanna do is get rid of a lot of that pencil. You don't want it mucking up your watercolors. And uh, now we're ready to paint. So what I'll be using is my Muno uh, 48 pan watercolor set. I find it's easy to use pan watercolors. Grab some clean water. And then for brushes, I find pointed round brushes in small sizes like one and two are kind of the perfect thing for this card. We'll start by um, mixing up a little bit of gray for the watering can. I have a French gray here, which is quite a milky color. Um, so I'm mixing in a little bit of this blue gray. I'll even mix in a little brown because I wanna paint the watering can as this old galvanized steel. I wanna get the gray right. So I'm, I might mix in even a little purple, but you could do the watering can any color. So mix up your paint, lots of water. Then we're gonna come over here and we're just going to fill in the shape of that watering can, laying down lots of wet liquid paint. Um, you don't wanna let it dry. You wanna keep moving the paint around so you don't get any harsh lines where the paint has dried. And I am kind of allowing for a little highlight on one side of the watering can where maybe the light is hitting it adding more darker gray at the bottom and the sides of that watering can. You can see I've left a bit of a lighter area, but I want to give this the texture of this old galvanized steel. So you'll see I'll add more paint as well, but for now that's good. Adding a dark gray onto the spout there. Um, yeah, I'm just moving the paint around, letting it get a little messy. I try to leave a little bit of negative space. I just think that looks natural. And then as the main part of the can begins to dry, I'm adding more dark gray, letting things get a little messy. There could be a shadow hitting the can. There could be a dent in that can. So I'm just kind of laying down paint, pretty much wrecking my brush. I'm watching this like, ooh. <laughs> and then I'm taking a lighter gray, um, and adding that to the spout just to show that maybe that's a different sort of gray color there. And um, yeah, just filling that in. So pretty simple, 
just need a gray can. And then you're going to mix up a bit of green. It could be any color of green, it doesn't matter. I'm using this kind of bright pea green. And we're going to start adding some leaves. You can do little detailed leaves like I'm doing here where you just use the tip of that brush and add a little bit of pressure to get those natural leaf shapes. Or you could do some larger leaves. Um, I'm starting with these detailed ones. Then I'm going to mix up a bit of a darker green and I'll add some, some leaves of a different shape and different size. You can follow along with what I'm doing here, but you could, you could do any kind of leaf, any sort of shape, any color of green. It's so not important. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is designed to get you feeling confident with your watercolor paints and to also make something pretty. And the watering can is fairly straightforward. And then we just do this big burst of green leaves and flowers. You can see I'm adding some larger leaves um, with really watery light paint and just having a little fun with my wet into wet watercolor. Once you've added those leaves, it's time to paint some hyacinth flowers, something nice for spring. Uh, you could do any color, but I'm starting with a light rosy pink. And the hyacinth is made up of all these tiny little blossoms. So I find painting them, you can almost just do this stippling. You can see I'm allowing paint to flow off the end of that round brush. I've got a lot of paint in the brush and then I just let it hit the page and I do these little dots and I'm going to do a purple hyacinth as well. I'm just dotting, kind of making the shape of a rounded rectangle because they are these big long flowers. And we're just doing these messy dots. Let it get a little lighter as you go up towards the top of the flower, a little darker at the bottom. You can kind of blend the flowers together a little bit, but you're basically just doing this stippling, maybe some tiny little X's. Um, and here you can see the colors I mixed up. I'm going to mix the pink and the purple to do a kind of light purple hyacinth here as well. So it's kind of fun. You can let all the colors blend and mix. Uh, add a little more water to lighten your paint as you go up towards the top of the flower. But they're just these big, long, um, sort of fat flowers. And all you have to do is a bit of stippling, add a little bit of water, and they really look like these loose hyacinths. Um, so that's the idea here. Keep it simple, but make something beautiful. Very perfectly imperfect. Um, just have fun with it. Don't worry too much about what colors you mix up. As long as you've got some green, some pink, and some purple, it's going to look nice. As the flowers dry, you can come back in with a slightly darker paint and continue that stippling. Um, it just helps to make everything pop, you know, a little bit of extra shading goes a long way. Tuck some little flower shapes in behind some of the leaves if you have a little empty space. If the flower is wet, you could add a little extra pigment and watch it seep out. So just have fun with it. I've got a little space at the bottom here where I need to kind of give the flowers uh, some stems. And I don't really want a lot of white space. I want this to look like a very full watering can, full of flowers. So what I'll do is I'll add the stems, some lines, and then I'll, with a wet brush, I'll kind of bleed that out and just give it this light green blur. Once you've painted a bunch of flowers, you might want to add some more leaves along the top. I find it easy to just flip the card upside down. I like to paint leaves when I'm kind of pulling the brush towards myself, towards my body. Um, just add a little pressure to the brush, uh, run that belly of the brush across the page and allow the shape to emerge naturally. Don't overthink it. Um, just added some light green leaves and some darker ones. And then I thought it would look nice to add a white hyacinth in the middle. I had the gray paint mixed up from the watering can, so I just added a little more water and white paint to lighten it. And then you can see I'm doing that same stippling motion and uh, adding a white hyacinth. And I think that looks nice and it really ties the pink and purple flowers together. 
We'll tuck a few more leaves in there. This is optional. I'm adding a bit more uh, gray to that dry watering can to give the look of the steel and maybe add a bit of shadow along the bottom of the spout and the inside of the handle. And I'll even add a little shadow or shading um, along the top because the flowers are sitting out over the top of that watering can. And then that's it, our painting is done. This makes such a cute card. Um, all I did was use a bit of double-sided tape to fix it to the uh, blank greeting card. And there's room at the bottom if you wanna put a little message. I like to leave mine blank sometimes and I write the message in when I know what I need the card for. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more content like this. And I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Want to be taken seriously as an artist? Having your own website can mean the difference between your artwork as a hobby and a business. Here's how simple this process can be with Squarespace. Step one, choose from one of their many professionally designed templates. I chose this one. I liked the large photos and the simple, impactful fonts. Once I knew this was the template for me, all I had to do was input my own photos, maybe change a color or two, and voila, here is my site. Uh, you can see it's got this nice header, and then I changed the purple to a soft pink, which I think really works with my brand. I input my own photos. Um, from there, you can build galleries, build a shop, and you can even easily process payments. That's so important, whether you're selling your artwork or your design services. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Campbell to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.